It's a quiet afternoon in Elkhart, Indiana. But a foolish and immature decision is about to end in deadly results. Elkhart 911. Where's your emergency at? 1919 Francis Avenue. I just shot two guys. 1919 Francis? Yes. Okay, you shot two people. Looking for a deviant rush and some cash. Four friends break into a house thinking no one is home. Inside, chaos erupts. Yes, they broke into my house. I'm holding a gun on the people right now. The boys are unexpectedly greeted by not only the startled homeowner, but by his nine millimeter pistol. Stop it, just stop it. Oh God, I think someone is dead. Please hurry up. It wouldn't matter how fast cops arrived. One young man was already dead, another wounded. But it was only the beginning, because in an unexpected legal twist, it would be the young boys charged and convicted for murder, though they never pulled the trigger. The tragic story all begins with typical teenage friendships and a typical teenage desire for trouble. 16-year-old Blake Lehman hung out with kids mostly from the neighborhood. 16-year-old Jose, 17-year-old Levi, 18-year-old Anthony, and 21-year-old Denzel. The boys would hang out after school. Levi just was around a lot more. I mean, Blake were real close. The autumn day with the boys started like any other. When Blake got home from school that day early in October, Levi came over. Blake and Levi went down the street and met up with Anthony and Denzel at Jose's house. And like teenagers, with too much idle time on their hands, they came up with a less than stellar plan. Reportedly, they decided to break into a nearby home to steal something. The boys were looking to only enter a house where no one was there. They went to two or three houses. They knocked on one door, they heard a dog. At the next house, they heard somebody inside. I think there was one other house that there was an issue with. And they weren't interested in a violent um, confrontation at all. The next house seemed ideal. Finally, they came across the house that was directly across the street from where they had been uh, meeting, talking. There was no vehicle in the driveway, no sign that anybody was home. Uh, they knocked on the door, nobody answered the door. Denzel, Anthony, Jose, and Blake decided it was the house to hit. Levi said he wasn't interested and stayed behind. Evidence was that Danzel Johnson led the group to the house, kicked in the door, and entered first. While inside the house, the boys quickly realized they were not alone. The homeowner, 54-year-old Rodney Scott, was home, upstairs sleeping. When he woke, it was to the horror of a house full of intruders. Things were about to go horribly wrong. At some point, uh, Mr. Scott heard something downstairs. Um, he immediately uh, went for his gun, charged down the stairs, and began shooting. With a hail of bullets coming at them and fear for their lives, the boys ran for cover. Anthony ran out the back door, and the three other boys ran into the downstairs bedroom closet. There was evidence the bullet may have been shot into the closet and struck Danzel while they were already in their hiding. Nevertheless, Blake was shot in the leg and uh, Danzel um, sadly died within minutes of being shot. Homeowner Rodney Scott called 911. I just shot two guys. Are they in the house? Yes, they're in the house right now. They're in the closet. Okay. Hurry up, please. Okay, don't hang up. What's your name? Rodney Scott. Rodney? Yeah. Rodney, put the gun down, okay? Don't move, brother. Okay. Rodney? Get back. Rodney. Get back. Brother, ain't you from across the street? Brother, I think you are. Reportedly, as cops arrived, Jose jumped out of the closed bedroom window and ran. He was caught and arrested soon after. At the station, Jose named the others involved. A warrant was put out for Anthony's arrest and eventually Levi's. The scene here on Francis Avenue was complete and utter chaos. The nearby schools were on lockdown. Rodney Scott's house was cordoned off. The neighborhood as they knew it would be forever changed. Blake's mom, Angie, said when she heard there had been a shooting on the block, she called Blake several times but got no answer. I thought my son was dead. 
Then she got a call saying Blake had been treated at the hospital for a gunshot wound to the leg. What she heard next shocked her more. He had also been booked into the city jail. When she arrived, it got worse. It came out there and told me he was being charged with murder. Of course, I lost it. It was instantly sick. A murder charge? No way. You know, it's like, how? When Angie was finally able to talk with Blake two days later, he told her about his heartbreaking last moments with Denzel. The boys were in the closet together when Denzel took his last breath. He said, all I could do is just hold him, Mom. I know when the police arrived, Blake was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, he was apologizing right away. When Levi's mom, April, heard what happened, she needed answers. Levi told me that the boys had asked him to, first of all, join them, and he said he didn't want to have no part of it. And when they did ask him to be a lookout, and he refused to do that. He said next thing he knew, he heard gunshots and he took off and he ran. Days later, the police surrounded the house and arrested Levi Sparks for felony murder. When April visited him at the county jail, Levi was a wreck. Levi was crying. He was, he didn't understand why he was being charged for murder when he didn't do anything and he was just begging me to get him out. 18-year-old Anthony Sharp Jr., 17-year-old Levi Sparks, 16-year-old Jose Quiros, and 16-year-old Blake Lehman were all booked on felony murder charges. In Indiana and in more than 40 other states, a person can be charged with felony murder if someone dies during or shortly after the commission of a felony, like a burglary, whether the death was intentional or accidental. The underlying offense must present a foreseeable danger to life. Strangely, the boys were not charged with burglary. All were to be tried as adults. They would now be known as the Elkhart Four. Coming up, these moms were getting ready for the battle of their lives. I knew right from the beginning that I would fight and do whatever I had to do to fight it, and that's what I did.